I was uh, 17 years old when I met Sarah. We were uh, almost like best friends, really. Like, we, uh, we'd always laugh at everything. We'd always make a joke out of anything, have a good time. And uh, a lot of my friends are not like that, so it was better to hang out with her than my friends, you know. And that was before we dated, so we were great friends before that. And you eventually, through all your time spending, you fall in love. And the kind of chemistry we had was just, like, great. We lived together, and we said sayonara to pretty much everyone and everything we were doing. We both dropped out of school just to stay at home and work and be together. And we dropped all our friends and... It was really great for a while. It was really great. Because you spent all your time. You spent all your time with your uh, girlfriend. Your friends, they tend to get jealous. You're good ones. And then you're just like, whatever, at a certain point. I'd rather be here than there. They want to go do this. I'd rather be with her, you know. You're getting everything you want from this one person. Why would you need to hang out with other friends? You know, so I rarely hung out with other friends. It's pretty much... I dropped a lot of them because they were just way immature and, you know, I stopped doing a lot of the things that they, they like to do. So you, you say goodbye to the, the dumbest of your friends and you don't have much left at that point. And I found out out of nowhere that she was pregnant and she was about two months. And uh, it was a big surprise because I didn't know what to do at first. I didn't have a great job. I had an okay job. I was making pretty good money. I was making much better money before that, but so basically I thought it took like to be a father, I thought it would take having a car, having a place to live, um, having your own bills, having everything to yourself, not trying to live off other people. What I had before I had my child was uh, I was playing in many bands I could play in and all these things I was doing. I was going to bars by myself just trying to play. And I had dreams of just getting paid to play music, really, just to, to play as much as I can and not have to go to work anymore because I had a horrible cubicle job. And that really tore my dreams of a lot. You know, I was like, I don't want to do any of these things now. So I, I wanted to play music and I quit my job and just said, I'm going to be a musician. And I started doing that way before I knew I was going to have a child. When my child came, I was at my best, you know. I was, we were doing a lot of shows and we were getting paid a little bit and it was pretty fun, so that kind of slowed things down. It slowed a lot of things down, but it's gotten way better since then, so I was really wrong. I know I assumed that when I had a child, it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to be nothing left. I was going to have to spend all my time doing this and that, but that's not that's still not the case. You know, There's plenty of time for everything if you work your schedule well, and everything's been going really great. I've been better than ever playing music so it's been fun and uh, I gotta say it, your kid will never ruin your dreams it's, it's, just, it's up to you really if you wanna ruin your dreams you know if you, you say this kid's gonna ruin your dreams then it's gonna I um I, what I did was first thing I did is I went out and got a car and uh, the, the place to live an apartment with my buddy and that stuff and I thought that would be enough but the kid he, uh, he was premature he came out three months early. So she had him out of nowhere one morning and it was just like that, I was a father. But uh, he was in he was in what you would call an incubator because he was premature. So he had to stay in there and he could leave but he'd have to go right back in there. He'd have to sleep and pretty much stay in there for two months. And uh, it would have really felt, it felt like you felt terrible because you could look at your baby and all these things are hooked up to him and you feel like you know, like, it's something wrong with him, but there's nothing wrong. He's going to be okay, but... So, most of the time, the mother, my girlfriend, Sarah, she, uh... She always thought she didn't feel like a real mother because she couldn't be there for him. Like, the nurses and everything. So, it was all very difficult. But, uh... It, at first, um... He came home when he was about two and a half months, and um, it was pretty fast. Yeah, I got a lot of free things from the hospital, and besides the bills, but uh, I got a lot of things from everybody. I got ba the baby shower was a success. I got plenty of diapers and wipes, so I had plenty of time to get money together and get moving on and get a better place to live. So 
that all that stuff ran out very fast, and you know, and it, it hit me seriously how much it costs to raise a kid, and then how much time consuming it is because when you know when they're first born, they don't sleep through the night. It takes a long time for them to get that. It takes almost a year to get them in that pattern. Um, so that was very, very hard. Not used to waking up all hours of the night. And so, well, now my yeah perception of, my, of being a father. Of, I'll say uh, the thought of being fatherhood is it's really changed for me. The idea of the ideal father, the. <laughs> The ideal dad, you would think of um, all the things I named off, like having the car, having the nice house, having everything prepared for this child so he can have the best life possible. It's a picture of my son after uh, he had his bath. He's uh, sitting there smiling at the camera. He's little white teeth. And <laughs> it's really, it's, it's like the best one. Got a lot of them. Um, it's changed a lot because I still don't have very much. I still have an okay job and have an okay set up and do my things here and there. And I'm still being a decent father. I'm still, he's getting everything he needs and not, nothing less. He has every toy under the sun, you know, all that stuff. Um, it doesn't take much. It just takes a, someone who cares. So you got all over, everywhere. He liked it a lot. That was its first birthday. You don't even have to have a job. And my idea, as long as you care and you're helping and you're there, that's one thing you can be doing. Another thing, there's a lot of things you can be doing, but that's, that's the best thing you can do is as long as you're being there and you're trying to take care of them, you don't need a dollar to be an ideal father. Internally, I felt a lot. I felt I never had time for college, full courses of college, you know, maybe classes, but... You know, I want to take college, I want to go through it all the way, so I didn't think I'd have time for that because I needed a job to support my child and my place of living. And also, uh, I just felt like I couldn't do a lot of things anymore. I couldn't maybe leave. I'd probably have to stay in this area my whole life, you know. You feel those kind of feelings. They can go away, they can come back real fast, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a little big, it's weird. It's, it depends upon how you are and what mood you're in. You know, most of the time, when you fall in love with your child, it comes real fast. You know, you internally you feel you're gonna do everything it takes to make him happy and have the best life of his life or her life, whatever your child may be. But um, externally, I made it, I kept a cool face. You know, I came every day to the hospital to see my child and where he was, and uh. I told everyone I'm going to do the right thing, and everyone didn't expect that, you know, because a lot of my friends, a lot of people I know, they don't take the extra step. They don't see their kid ever, or they see their kid once a month, and they don't have a job. They don't want to have a job. They don't want to pay for this. They don't want to do that. It kind of makes you look like you're uh, different from all of them because they're your friends at the same time. So, and then you're just like, well, I'm way better off, you know. I'm gonna, in 10 years, I'm going to appreciate I did this. And they're going to be like, I wish I did that. I wish I spent that time. And I'm like, I did spend that time. I did see him at that age. I did see him fourth, fifth, sixth birthday. I saw all that. So that's those are my feelings in, inside and out.